I'm on Adobe's Adobe portfolio and this is free for use for anybody who has Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. So if you pay your monthly subscription for the Adobe Cloud, you automatically have a place where you can host a website. You can even purchase a domain name from GoDaddy and bring it into Adobe Portfolio so you can have a professional URL or website name. So I've used this for a couple of years. I've been pretty impressed with how easy it was to build a portfolio. This is built for portfolios in mind. So all of these templates benefit a portfolio driven website, um, not necessarily magazines or blogs. It really, really benefits showing off photos and work and videos as well. So they've since added a lot of extra templates. I'm going to not go through each and every one, but going to go through the basics of creating a basic website here. And we're going to do that right now. So we're going to create a new site. I already have my portfolio loaded there. We're going to go ahead and create a new site. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the gallery of work because we really want to show off all of our stuff. And this is where it's great to sketch out your layout, have a layout plan, look at that downloadable resource to get some ideas of some basic layouts. Um, even if you just take a pen and paper and sketch out what you think is your desired portfolio layout, do that ahead of time. So when you're finding templates for WordPress or themes for WordPress, or you're using Adobe portfolio, or you're using Squarespace, you kind of know which template out of the box is going to match what the kind of layout you desire the quickest. So we're going to go ahead and do gallery of work. And so there's a lot of great, fantastic themes. You know, I've already kind of thought about what I, th I think would be the best layout for Lillian and her portfolio and her projects. And I'm thinking, you know, we have three that we want to feature, but on our online website, or we had three we featured on the PDF portfolio, but on the online website, we can add a few more. Um, I think if we stick to six very simple projects, a lot of these layouts will show those all above the fold. And so if you don't know what uh, website basic terminology is, above the fold is when you get onto a website, that's what you see on the, on the screen. You don't have to scroll. It's right there in front of your face. It's above the fold, which comes back from the days of newspaper where everything that was below where the newspaper folded or anything that was above it was more important because it, that's what the user or the viewer sees first. So trying to find a portfolio that I think would work with that. I think this one down here, Thomas, um, might work really well if I had if I was a writer or if I had something where copywriting or text was really important, um, then maybe this Marta might be very good because it really puts maybe a client testimonial or some kind of headline, puts text at the forefront instead of photography. And if it depends on kind of what you do, if you have high resolution images that need to be bigger on screen when you show them off, using something like this Marina template might work out a little bit better for you. So we're going to go with the Thomas layout. We can always change this very easily and it'll automatically make the adjustments for us if we change the templates. So it's going to automatically load a lot of my projects from Behance.com because Behance and the Adobe Portfolio are connected. So every time you post a project on Behance, it can automatically load on your portfolio on Adobe, which is kind of a neat way to connect both both websites, both types of portfolios. So I'm going to kind of remove the ones that I'm not going to include for Lillian and go ahead and add her projects in. And of course, you can change the size of these boxes as well. You can give them rounded edges, padding between each box, which can kind of be nice. So you can add, add a little bit of visual separation between each project. And you can also change the amount of columns that you have. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this. And so this is when kind of layout theory comes in handy when it comes to portfolio building. So this would really overwhelm a user coming in because your profile cover photos for different projects are going to look pretty different. And so it's going to seem quite disjointed, all these projects slammed together. So if we reduce the amount that we're shown to maybe three per bar, we could show our six and have nice big uh, preview files for them to be able to see so they can click on and see the whole project and all of its detailed glory. So we're going to stick with just three across, just do two rows of three projects each. And of course, with this, you can change anything. We could switch it to our uh, font choice that we have uh, that we developed in our branding standards for Lillian. We can use those same type faces or those same fonts throughout so that everything matches. Of course, we can even use those hex codes that we developed in the branding. When we did the personal branding for Lillian in the previous section of the course. You can add those hex codes that we have in our branding standards to be able to pull those out. So I'm just going to take this as an example, take our blue, grab our hex code here. This is where it really comes in handy and just paste it in there. 
and now we have her blue in there. So now we need to add kind of a top header. We need to add our logo in there. And this is why when we did the personal branding for her, we developed a horizontal version for her logo. So it would fit really well on a traditional website layout. Not that the big seal that we developed for her may work really well on certain things, but it's not gonna work well all the time in those traditional uh, portfolio website layouts. So we're gonna add that in right now. And it depends, we're gonna need to get that plan going. So if you sketched out your plan and you decided you wanted to do a darker background, instead you can uh, have, have the logo load that in with white. So it looks really good on a black uh, background. Or in my case, I think I'm gonna stick with a stark white and try to do a very clean contemporary look with my portfolio. I'm gonna stick with a uh, just a black uh, ink on white background. Just making sure everything matches up in terms of all the typography or all the font choices. So the links and the uh, her logo are all the same typeface, which is Bitten Sands, and they're the same type weight, so they're all bold. So each project will need a specific cover in this particular layout. So we really want to find a photo that really captures each project. And so we already did the PDF portfolio, so we already got a lot of our photos gathered together, those hero images that we used in the PDF portfolios for our first page, whatever we, whatever image we use for our first page to introduce that project. That's probably what you'll end up cropping for your uh, project photos. This is a perfect square cropping if you're a photographer, if you have something that needs to be in a different ratio. If you're in video, you can always change the ratio of these as well. You can also add social media icons very easily. So we're just going to customize up here at the top and just kind of switch these on and add as many relevant social media channels as possible. Don't put any social media channel that you haven't built up yet. Make sure it has a really nice, at least several projects already posted on there. We, the clients very well may check this out. So you need to make sure you have all your social media that you're posting, make sure it's final, make sure there's several really great posts already on there. On there, it doesn't look like an empty social media page. So we have some kind of basic structure here. Each one of these, we, we need to find kind of the right cover photo for each one of our projects. I need to start loading in all those images. When you click on a particular project, it goes to a landing page. And this is kind of what we want to kind of expand on and talk about kind of having a nice title, having a client quote. This is when we did our PDF portfolios. We did a lot of work with that already. So this will be really easy to put together because it's going to be very similar. You're already going to have your descriptions written uh, for your project and already going to have the types of photos you're going to use as well. So we're going to be rebuilding that, but in a digital format for each one of these landing pages. And this is where it's nice to show the process as I talked about in prior lessons, how you're showing the brainstorming process and you're guiding users um, kind of through a journey, walking them through your project in detail.